I've been on a real fusions kick lately with the Pokemon Monster Hunter fusions episodes and the Popcross Design Challenge, which is getting a sequel in a couple weeks. And so today I wanted to try fusing a whole bunch of famous pop culture aliens with Ben 10 aliens. And this is actually partially inspired by a submission for the Popcross Design Challenge sent in by New York Art. Though I don't know if New York was actually consciously choosing to do three aliens or if that was a coincidence. But regardless, it helped inspire this video. So thanks, New York. I'll link his Instagram in the cards. But anyway, let's see how this goes, shall we? Let's go. Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Bustar Terminex mission. Ugh, I don't even want to do a log for that last mission. What a snarking mess. I mean, I didn't even get the bounty since that coward teleported the Xenoforge away. Plus, I had to watch that little rat demon punk kill all those beautiful Xenomorphs. Ugh. I am truly sorry for the hardship you faced, Bostar, and that I was unable to assist you. The atmosphere jamming my signal to you was an unexpected hindrance. Yeah, well, nothing we can do about it now, ship. Can't believe all that after I was already going against my own gut by taking a bounty hunting job for the Intergalactic Safety Commission. No matter how good the pay was gonna be, those punks didn't deserve my help. If you believe you need to vent in order to fully feel these feelings, please do so. But, also, I have something that may cheer you up if you would like to hear it instead. Uh, I guess let's go with the cheering me up thing. What do you got? Well, if you recall, before departing on your latest venture, the Ishkonian researcher and scientist, Asmuth, informed you that he was seeking more beings such as yourself to work on bringing dangerous and endangered creatures to Ishkonigan Major to keep them safe on the nature preserve. Well, he has found many candidates, and four heroic beings have already agreed to join. They may become good allies to you, as they are eager to fight for a similar cause as yourself. Huh. I guess that could be sort of nice. You got their files or something I could go through? Bringing them up now. Alright, let's... Wait, are... Is this one a Snargan Tyranid? No way. I, I thought these things got wiped out a thousand years ago. Bet the Safety Commission wouldn't be happy to see this guy around and kicking. Oh, wait. Okay, that makes more sense. Says here his name is Quadrich, and that he was an experiment of a mad scientist who was trying to make the ultimate living bioweapon, and he used some parts of a preserved Tyranid carcass in his genetic manipulation. He filled in the gaps with Tetraman DNA and a few other species as well. Jeez, this guy's a tank. He shapeshifts and can retract two of his limbs. Alright, well, that's gotta be wrong. It says here he can lift 3,000 times his own body weight? Keep in mind, Bustar, he may not be as large as you think. The image you are seeing is somewhat deceptive. This bounty hunter is only four and a half feet tall, not including the horn on his head. Oh, wait, for real? Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, that's still a pretty wild claim, 3,000 times his weight. But I guess it makes sense since he was bred to be a beast and has Tetraman DNA mixed in there. This guy's a real looker, too. Don't know if I'd want to go drinking with him, he'd be getting all the attention. I believe you are once again assuming that others have the same unconventional beauty standards that you have, Bustar. Yeah, maybe, but either way, I'm definitely game to do some alien tracking alongside a Tyranid. One of my favorite games to play as a kid was to pretend I was a swarm lord and I was sending out my hive to take over a planet. Your childhood game strikes me as equally strange as your beauty standards, but I do appreciate your ability to embrace these unorthodox elements of yourself. Alright, what do we got next? Oh, Snark, we got a big gal here. She's more than 40 feet tall. Says she goes by the codename Blue Deox, but I don't recognize her species. Oh, right, okay, it says she's part Togruta and part Tokastar. How'd her parents pull that off? Tokastars are way too big to do any baby making with a Togruta. Love always finds a way to flourish, Bastar. I mean, sure, that's a cute sentiment ship, but it doesn't really explain anything. I mean, I think I heard Toka stars can shift their size, but still. I, I mean, there's probably a lot I don't know about them, I guess. They're a pretty rare species. Some folks say they get born out of cosmic storms, but I always figured that was just a legend. Maybe some Togruta lady got herself stuck in a cosmic storm and a, a baby just showed up in her or something? But then again, how would a baby that big... You know what, whatever, this ain't the point. Besides, her background don't explain how she's looking in this pic. I mean, I, I can sorta of see the Togruta in her with the Montrals, but she's gotta have some kind of weird suit tech or something on. 
If you move to the section about her weaponry, I believe that explains it. Alright, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go. Thanks, ship. Says she acquired some infected tech made by a race called the Reach. Some conquering species that the Safety Commission forced to sign a peace treaty on threat of destruction. Ugh, of course they're coming up in this bio. I mean, I, I guess I'm glad they stopped the conquering species, but still. A good reminder that nobody, even those you despise most, are purely evil. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get those snark bunters off my mind, remember? Anyway, so this tech she got is some sort of scarab beetle looking thing that already had some pretty sweet shapeshifting powers, but then it got even more powered up when it was infected with some kind of mutated alien virus. Now it can do more than just make different weapons over her body, it can actually mutate her body under the suit too, so she can take on totally different shapes and forms herself. Says she's got four forms she can usually shift into for different situations. Her standard one here, an attack form, a defense form, and a speed form. Jeez, why didn't they just send this lady out to get the Xeno Forge? Seems like she could have plowed through every Xeno without even taking a hit. Her power is impressive, but was the forge not at the bottom of a series of caverns that would have been too small for her to fit in? Oh, right, duh. Even if she can shrink down to half her size, some of those tunnels still would have been a tight fit. Plus, I bet she would have had the smart not to take a job for the safety commission anyway, unlike me. Please do not beat yourself up about that any further, Bastar. Remember, the Xenoforge you tracked down was transporting innocent beings from across the universe to infect with Xenomorph embryos, ensuring their death. Even if you were seeking some payment for the task, it was still a worthwhile venture. Yeah, it's, I guess you're right. Thanks, Chip. Alright, this next one has to be some kind of joke. There's no way Celestial Sapiens and Super Saiyans are real. Those are just... stories for kids. Next you're gonna tell me Viltrumites are real too. If this guy seriously had powers like those folks, he could just solve every problem in the universe. Plus, why's he got the arm of a Pyronite? Perhaps both Celestial Sapiens and Saiyans are real, but are merely less powerful than is implied by various legends and tales about them. Though, from footage of seeing this being in action, I can say I've seen very few entities of such might when he accesses his full strength. With that said, the origins of his abilities state that he was not born of either of these incredibly powerful species. Huh. Alright, yeah, so this guy, Garlic, was some sort of experiment as well. Says he was born a Skrull. Ain't that the species that's been fighting with the Kree for... Seems like a billion years now. Those folks just need to shake hands and shut up. Nobody's winning that war. Anyway, this guy was one of their later Super Skrull experiments, where they tried to up their shapeshifting into letting their warriors take on the powers of other species and not just their looks. The doc working on this guy was some Skrull named Parox, and he claims he was able to get genetic material from both a Celestial Sapien and a Saiyan, along with a bunch of other aliens that I can actually confirm are real, like a Pyronite and a Galvanic Mechamorph. When all the tests and experiments were done, they called this guy Skrull X. Apparently Parox gave this guy 10 alien powers overall, but if he's got Saiyan strength and the ability to warp reality around him like a Celestial Sapien, I don't know why he'd need anything else. Plus, how do you get genetic material off something like a Celestial Sapien? They're just space in the shape of a humanoid being. From the footage I've observed, it seems his powers, while incredibly vast, have limitations stemming from his own original body. He can only use the ability of a Saiyan, or Celestial Sapien, for a few moments at full strength, as it is incredibly draining to his energy. Because of this, he will often rely more heavily on his other eight abilities, unless absolutely necessary. Huh. Well, I guess that checks out as to why this guy ain't just punched a hole through every Kree in the galaxy by now. Oh, <laughs> and it seems he's backed out of that war anyway. Had the common sense to see that it wasn't going anywhere and that the Skrull military-industrial complex wasn't really interested in seeing the war end because of how much funding they got out of it. So after a few fights, he bailed on his people and started looking for a better cause to use his powers for across the universe. Sounds like an admirable being to align yourself with. Yeah, I guess, but I kind of feel like if I went on a mission with this guy, he could still just wrap it up too quick. And then again, maybe I could go on some even tougher jobs with this guy. Help me up my own game. That is the sort of attitude I enjoy hearing from you, Bastard. An excellent perspective. Oh. 
All right, last one we got here. Looks kind of like a mechanical Kinoceleran. Huh. This gal's got a real odd mix. Says she's got ancestors who are from Kinet, Cybertron, and Ewa Eving. Glad they got the name written down properly here instead of calling it Pandora. Shouldn't let the invaders of a place give it a new name, obviously. Once again, this being has a lineage that is difficult to understand how some of her ancestors, of dramatically different biologies, managed to reproduce with one another. Yeah, I thought Cybertronians just, I don't know, spawned out of cubes or something? But anyway, this gal's name is Nyarsi, and she's got all the speed of a Kinoceleran, plus can shift parts of her body into weapons. She can't go into a full vehicle mode like most Cybertronians, though. Apparently she's gone to spend time on all her different ancestors' homeworlds to learn about their cultures and buff up her skills she got from each of them. Power-wise, she didn't get much from her Navi heritage, but when she visited there she learned to get in tune with nature, both on her homeworld and on other worlds, even ones with more biomechanical origins like Cybertron. Probably why she was game to get involved with the Ishkonians in the first place, they're all about connecting with nature too. But her Kinoceleran powers are the ones she uses the most. Makes sense to me, having speed like that you practically don't need anything else. If it was small enough for her to carry, she could just snatch up a xenomorph or something and toss it into a transport container before it even had a sec to know what was up. It seems Asmuth has found a very skilled set of trackers, and he is still actively seeking more. And I say bring them all on, get a few hundred of them doing this stuff. Yes, you will have so many new possible allies to choose to work with. Your past conflicts with hunters who did not respect your decision to stop killing the creatures you track will soon be a distant memory. Yeah, but more important, I got a lot of toughest stone hunters to compete with now, too. Nothing makes you step up your game like going up against folks who are stronger than you. I'm gonna show them that even if some of these folks got crazy speed or say in strength, I can still pull in way more Xenos and dangerous alien creatures than any of them. While I assumed you would be more eager about the fact that you can now make new friends, I am happy to hear that you are excited to continue your work. I am. Thanks, Ship. Now let's get back to Ishkonigan Major, see what the toughest job they got is, and get after it. Gonna show these newbies what I got. This was a very interesting blend, and I almost think I want to try another one, but not just tying it to Ben 10, just a whole bunch of different pop culture aliens. Or I could even fuse famous wizards together, or famous dragons, just give me some fusion ideas in the comments. Plus, if you enjoyed this, you might like my Ben 10 Aliens as Xenomorphs episode that I did a couple months ago, set in the same universe. Also, all the high-resolution art and inks from this episode are up on the Popgrass Studios Patreon, where art and inks go up a day before a video is released. But besides that, that's all for today, except, of course, for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with is a quote I read this week from a man named Neil Strauss, who said that everyone you know is so unique. Expecting them to act and think exactly how you would does a disservice to the beauty of who they are. That ties directly into one of my personal core values, acceptance, that everyone deserves the right to live their life the way they believe they're meant to, which is probably why I particularly like that quote. I hope that's inspiring, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye.